It's used, he carefully selected. Now the Greek word for church, anybody know? Ecclesia. Ecclesia, from which you get ecclesiastical. Ecclesia. But Jesus didn't use that word church. He used the word for nation. Anybody know the Greek word for nation? Ethnos. And he chose his words carefully. He's the son of God. And he said, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you, the Jews, and given to a nation. Now listen carefully what I say now. People still think of the Jews as the only chosen people. They are not. Until they come to Jesus. And they are still rejecting Jesus. And the state of Israel still rejects Jesus. And I've been over there five times. And any missionary in Israel will tell you they're having a very difficult time. In the state of Israel, there's approximately three and a half million Jews. Also, a million and a half Arabs. But of those three and a half million Jews, how many born-again Christians do you think there are? There are not very many. Many of the Arabs, of course, call themselves Christians, so they're going to be called as Jews. So there are a lot of nominal Christians. But the born-again Christians would be between two and a half thousand and three thousand out of three and a half million. So it's, you never want to think that it's an easy thing to preach the gospel over there. It isn't. Now, Jesus said, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you, Judah, the Jews, and given to a nation, Israel, the ten tribes. And notice there carefully, Jesus chose his words carefully. He said it's going to be a nation. Now you can prove that by looking at the fruits. What are the fruits of the kingdom? The first fruit of the kingdom would be to publish the word of God. Right? Who does the printing of the word of God? The British and Overseas Bible Society and the American Bible Society. Between them, they do 90% of the Bibles printed in the world. That's number one fruit. The second fruit would be to send out missionaries. 90% of the missionaries of the world come from the British Commonwealth and the United States. Fruit number two. Three, feed the hungry. Who sends the bulk of the food to Ethiopia? The British Commonwealth and the United States. Jesus said, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. And with all our faults and failings, we are bringing forth some fruit. We could bring forth a lot more fruit. But when our people awaken to their identity, there will be more fruit. Because we'll recognize our responsibilities. At present, we're blind to our identity. But one day, the eyes of all the world are going to be opened. And they're going to see who is that nation. And Jesus emphasized it because <clears throat> he quotes from Daniel chapter 2. And whosoever shall fall on this stone, the stone kingdom we read there, shall be broken. But on whomsoever it will fall, it will grind him to powder. Jesus confirms the stone kingdom. He is the stone which the builders rejected, but we are the stone kingdom bringing forth some fruit and we believe we're going to bring forth more fruit do you see that and those are the words of Jesus confirming to you what you are seeing on the screen tonight in the parade of five empires four of them rose and fell exactly described in exactly the same time but the fifth kingdom he said will not be destroyed why because we name the name of Jesus. Now, I was reminded during the intercession about the Anglican prayer book. Are there any here that belong to the Anglican church or knew the Anglican prayer book? Do you ever know the Anglican prayer book? Well, now, you'll find this very interesting because those of you who've known the Anglican prayer book have known there for Sunday after Sunday we've claimed that we're God's servant people Israel. 
Do you remember the responses? Grant to us peace in our time, O Lord, for there is none that fighteth for us but only thou, O God. Isn't that right? Bless thine inheritance and make thy chosen ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho, did you hear that? Make thy chosen people joyful. You got some joy tonight? Amen. Why? Because you are the chosen people. Do you see that? And we say that said every Sunday in our Anglican prayer book. Grant us peace in our time, O Lord, for there is none that fighteth for us but only thou, O God. And fulfilling your promises you made to our forefather, Abraham, and his seed forever. The Anglican prayer book proclaims our identity every Sunday. I only wish every vicar in Australia <laughs> would tell them what I'm telling you here tonight. And that's true. And our Queen, remember this, our Queen, as I told you, Queen Elizabeth I, was head of church and state and she called for the day of prayer that meant the overthrow of the Spanish Armada. And God blew with his winds and scattered them. And she had a medal struck and those words are put around it to commemorate the destruction of the Spanish Armada. And by the way, you can still see the remnants of it. We were up in Scotland some years ago. If you go to Oban and Tobermory, anybody be here to Oban and Tobermory in Scotland, you'll see at low tide one of the top decks of the Spanish Armada that crashed on Scotland's ruggy coast. And God said, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And Queen Elizabeth, to celebrate the destruction of the Spanish Armada, had the medal struck and it had the words, he blew with his winds and scattered them. And they have a day of thanksgiving. Do you see God's plan? And so here, the Queen is the head of church and state. And just as she led the nation in prayer, and King George VI, the present Queen's father, led the day of prayer of 1940, which brought the miracle of Dunkirk, so I wouldn't be surprised if our present Queen leads us in prayer to the throne and bring the same results. That's why we pray for the Queen. She has a very important task and you can't help loving Princess Diane and those boys, can you? <laughs> Don't they capture the world? Don't the Americans just about turn somersaults when they get them over there? They love it. But you see, here you see a plan that God has because we are now facing the last big weapon. And this weapon is directed right at our people. And it's Russia. And if you turn to Ezekiel chapter 38, I'll tell you about the next weapon that's being prepared. And President Ronald Reagan is going to meet uh, Gorbachev in November. And uh, Gorbachev and he are going to have a talk together, but this will tell you what's going to happen. If you turn to Ezekiel chapter 38, you'll read here about Russia in Bible prophecy. <coughs> Ezekiel chapter 38 starts off with the words, <coughs> the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Anybody know here tonight what Meshach stands for? Moscow. Moscow. And in the Russian Bibles, which are printed in Russia. And before the revolution, they had after Meshach here, in brackets, Moscow. So Russia recognizes this. Moscow. So Meshach is a state in Russia, and Moscow is the capital. <coughs> Tubal. Anybody know what Tubal stands for? Tobolsk. And uh, Tubal is the capital of the state of Tobolsk. And it says, I will turn you back. Put hooks in yours, bring yours and bring you forth. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya. What's the modern name of Persia? Iran. Have you seen the way Iran is acting against the United States? Ethiopia. 
Have you noticed how the Marxist government there are preventing the food going to the rebels that don't want to be under communism? Libya, you heard of Gadda Colonel Gaddafi? And it says all of them. Goma, anybody know who Goma is? East Germany. Togoma, anybody know who Togoma is? Turkey. And it says in verse 8, after many days you shall be visited in the latter years. Anybody know when the latter years are? Now. Right now. And it says you'll come against the mountains of Israel. You'll come from the land that is brought back from the sword against gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel. This is a move of Russia in the Middle East. Palestine, Iran, Syria, Iraq. And they shall ascend and come like a storm. That's referring to the powerful air fleets and paratroops. Like a cloud to cover the land. Now, verses 1 to 9 describe Russia's move in the Middle East. And that's why she's rearming Syria and the PLO and so on. But she, verse 10 changes. This is campaign number two. Thus says the Lord God, it shall also come to pass also. At the same time as the Middle East campaign, you will think an evil thought and thoughts will come to your mind and you will say, I'll go up to the land of unwalled villages. Does anybody know where up means? Canada and the United States. To them that are at rest, dwelling without having bars or gates. And it says, who's going to oppose Russia? Sheba and Dedan. Anybody know who Sheba and Dedan is today? Sheba and Dedan? Where did the queen, where did the queen come from? Queen of Sheba? That's Arabia. Arabia. Sheba and Dedan is Arabia. Remember the Queen of Sheba? Arabia. Saudi Arabia is America's, one of America's best friends today in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia. The merchants of Tarshish. Anybody know who the merchants of Tarshish are? Britain. Well, the next one's very simple. Who are the young lions? Ourselves. There's a war from Australia, isn't there? Yes, the young lions are... Another name for the Stone Kingdom. Britain, the United States, Australia, New Zealand, Canada. Now in verse 16 it says, You shall come up against my people of Israel. And this time it's not Palestine, it's over the North Pole into Israel of Manasseh, the United States. Can you see that? And so it says, There's a cloud to cover the land, it shall be in the latter days. When are the latter days? Now. Now. So, we'll show to you how this applies to the present time. And uh, here <coughs> we have the picture showing the two superpowers. And we've been referring to campaign number one of Soviet Russia into Palestine, Iran, Syria, supporting Syria, and designs here on Iraq. And then across the North Pole, you have the British Isles, just over the line there. And then you have Canada and the United States. And that is what the world is facing today. The Bible calls it Armageddon. What's Armageddon? The world's last war. Armageddon, we're going to deal with this more on, on a Saturday when we deal with the book of Revelation, but in Revelation chapter 16, it refers to Armageddon. And you'll often see this name appearing in our newspapers, Armageddon. And what is Armageddon? Armageddon is not the black countries versus the white or the any other. It's simply... Russian communism against the Christian democracy of America. That's what it is. Armageddon is communism versus Christianity. Leading on the one side is the Soviet Russia and depending 
Christianity and democracy is the United States. And here, it's part of the Stone Kingdom. And this is the last attack on the Stone Kingdom. Aren't you glad you belong to God? Amen. Aren't you glad you're the Stone Kingdom? And so this is a great message for our people today. And that's why this crusade was raised up. When Leo Harris and I started off in 1945, as the first two pastors, we launched out on this message because the war was just over, people wanted to know. But since that time, God phased out the national message as we brought in the baptism in the spirit and healing, the righteousness message, the faith message, and so on. But the wheel is taking a full circle and the national message is coming back with real power and anointing and people can see it today as clear as a pike staff that there you have the last challenge to the stone kingdom and Russia says she's going to succeed where Hitler failed and where Kaiser William failed and where Napoleon failed and the Spanish Armada failed Russia says we will destroy them and we'll reign. And that's what the world faces today. And that's why you've been gathered together in a meeting like this. And that's why this national message is being proclaimed today because you have a vital part to play. What is going to be the answer to our threat by Russia? It's not going to be just outside threat. We've got plenty of inside threat in Australia with communist-led unions. Have you heard of Norm Gallagher over here? <laughs> We're not very proud of Norm over in Victoria. Norm Gallagher was a man that had no time for capitalists and no time for business tycoons and profiteering, but he did very well about that cottage of his and his sons down the coast, didn't he? <laughs> A villain of the peace, and he says that his Bible is Karl Marx and Das Kapital, communism. You heard of John John Halfpenny? <laughs> well, as someone said of John Halfpenny, unless John Halfpenny saved, he won't be worth tuppence in the kingdom of God. <laughs> John Halfpenny is another self-confessed communist. Have you heard of Laurie Carmichael? Have you heard of Jack Monday? Yeah, yeah. All you have to look down and you'll see that the majority of positions in our unions and domination is by leftists or communists or Marxists. We got internal communism in Australia. And what they'd like to do, they're taking their orders from Moscow. Isn't that right? They want chaos. They want socialism and then communism. And that's what we're facing today. And that's why God has you here tonight. And that's why he's raised up this Christian revival crusade. We have a message to the nation. And a message to the nation that God has a master plan. We are the fifth kingdom of Daniel. The stone kingdom. Which Jesus confirmed and said, Whosoever shall fall upon the stone shall be broken because no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And what's our way out? It's in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. And if you turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, you'll read here of the way out of our problem. And it's going to be right back to the original call that God gave to his people. And this is our way out. The tax summit is an effort to solve our problems, <clears throat> but it's only going back into old uh, areas. But 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14 is the way God has planned that we shall be healed and the way that we shall come through our crisis. And uh, this is a mighty verse. I think it's so wonderful. It'd be good if we all read it together. Amen. It's going to be fun, you know, some of the modern translations, but... Let's make a start all together. 
if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land again if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land hallelujah Amen. isn't that tremendous if my people that are called by my name the name Israel means ruling with God El is short for Elohim and Israel a prince or ruling so now we'll read it and when we have if my people which are called by my name Israel Britain and the Commonwealth Scandinavia we'll include we'll to make it simple we'll call it Anglo-Saxon Scandinavia we'll put after that after my name if my people who are called by my name Anglo-Saxon Scandinavia shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way then will I hear from heaven will forgive their sin and heal their land and our land needs healing we have many divisions and we have many upheavals in our land homosexuality has been accepted and they're trying to bring it acceptance I see in your secondary schools here homosexuality caused two cities their lives and we've been there and we've seen their graves one was called Sodom and the other was called Gomorrah and the Dead Sea is their memorial and we've seen all that lava from that volcano it's still there miles of it black as pitch one big V from the volcano spewing out God's wrath against that system and I brought back some of the rocks that were thrown up by that volcano that overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and we have a man in the assembly in Verwood who does microbiology in the hospital and he said do you know what was the first name we gave to AIDS do you know what it was until they worked out uh, AIDS he said until we developed that name we had the only name we could call on what's known as AIDS when we first discovered it we called it God's wrath yes. is that interesting Amen. God's wrath and who should accept this homosexuality in our schools to to permeate our young people and so it's time Australia stood up and said away with teachers and universities who would give any credence to homosexuality and lesbianism it's a blight on our country isn't that right and look at our liquor traffic and look at the carnage on our roads that's a blight on our country our country needs healing from immorality venereal disease homosexuality AIDS and lesbianism it needs healing and then you've got the violence just last week in Victoria we had a chap go astray and he shot four policemen and one poor man is a quadriplegic for life as you've seen on your TV as I saw it last night a gallant man because of violence this land needs healing violence is growing all the time and you think of child abuse and incest this country needs healing but thank God we've got the answer if my people that are called by my name and then will turn from their sin then will I hear from heaven will give their sin and heal the land that's why you and I are here tonight that's why God raised up this Christian revival crusade not only with a personal message but to show the five kingdoms of history and to show that we have a responsibility a task ahead of us and I believe the greatest days of the Christian revival crusade are right ahead of us 
to bring, help to bring this nation with other bodies and other churches and other denominations who will believe the same way to bring this nation back to God. And that's why God's allowing Russia to rise. Why did God allow the Philistines to rise in Palestine about our forefathers? They cried, Lord, the Philistines are on us. And God raised up Samson, raised up the uh, David and the modern Philistines are the Russians and they won't go one step more than God allows them until he brings us back to himself.